Hello there, it's Maggie the Cheshire Crafter here. Um, it's still August and it's hot, I've got the fan on and it's 23 degrees. It's what we call muggy, uh, clammy today. So it's really quite warm and I thought what better to do on a warm August day is do something cool. So I'm doing some Christmas patchwork. Um, I ordered this from eBay quite some time ago and uh, I've just ordered some more because I feel it cuts really beautifully. I'm going to show you the fabric that I've bought and uh, and then how I've changed it around a little bit. Let me show you the fabric. So I ordered the fabric from eBay and I ordered two packs. Uh, so I've actually received five designs. This design makes up the design and they're two large hollies and then three small ho hollies with a grey and they've got this beautiful gold sheen on them. Now I'm taking out the larger holly and I'm replacing it by with something else and I've ordered this separately and this is Christmas Roses. Sorry I've got camera shake while I'm trying to move. This is Christmas Roses and I'm going to use that as a central feature. So I'm going to cut out now with this and I've got 10 inch squares. So for this project I'm changing my cotton. This is a hemline cotton and I'm going to uh, fill up my bobbin with that. At the moment I've got a jeans needle in and I'm going to change my needle to an 80 universal. I've still got my line straightener to help keep me straight but if you can see, I don't know if you can see by my finger here, I've actually changed. I've bought one of these a quarter inch presser foots for a singer, for a singer machine. And I'm going to try and butt my material right under that, up to that, to make sure I get a quarter inch, quarter inch precision. Pre oh, I can't speak. Quarter inch precision sewing, because I'm working with small pieces of patchwork. Now the problem with the, uh, with the problem with that is that the fabric has been cut, and it's not accurate. I bought it as ten inch pieces. And uh, I've had to try and straighten it up. Uh, every time you, you buy a piece of fabric, don't assume that when it says it's 10 inch, it's actually 10 inch. Now, a quarter or an eighth of an inch out on somebody else's cut will make a difference to my sewing. So I have straightened up the edges of this before I've cut it. Now, I've split those in half. So from each 10 inch square, I've got 16 pieces. And what I've done, I've kept a center piece and then of each contrasting design, kept 16 pieces of each. And I've done that twice. This is my pattern idea and I'm just gonna talk you through it. I'm going to create a six inch square block. Because I've cut two and a half inch squares, if I give a quarter inch seam allowance, it will leave me with small two inch squares. And for each six by six inch block, I'm going to need nine squares. Now I've called my designed pieces A, B, C, D and E. And I'm gonna mark them with post-it notes so I don't tie myself in knots. And then, so for each square, I'm going to need a contrast. And for this, I'm going to use two different contrasts. One will be red and one will be white. And these are the ones that are marked with X. So to know how many to cut out, for every central piece I need, and I've got 16, I'm going, I'm going to need four pieces of that. So I'm going to need 16 times 4, and I think that's 64, 64 pieces. So I'm going to cut 64 red squares and 64 white squares at 2.5 inch each. And I'm going to use 100% cotton again for that. 
So I now have my squares cut. I've got 16 each of the central piece A and 16 each of B, C, D and E and I've repeated that twice. For one lot I've got 64 central pieces of a white contrasting cotton and for the other I've got 64 pieces cut which are called X2 of a red contrasting cotton and my pattern's going to be simple. I'm going to take it around a nine inch square and I'm going to first of all take take pattern design design B I'm going to take four pieces and place it around that design. And I'm going to repeat the same with the red squares. So I'm going to take four pieces of pattern B. Hard to do with just one hand, you know. Three, four. This will become my one of my two block patterns. And uh, you get the gist. And I'm going to pin those in, in that. And that then will be my uh, block one and block two with two different colourways. So we've got the same internal piece always. A is the red rose and the holly will vary around the edge. And I'm going to repeat that with each of the patterns. So currently I've got block one and block two. And I'm also going to photograph that so I know where my pattern design is. To sew each block, I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew this to this, this to this, and the same down. And then I'm going to sew each, each column in each row together. And I'm going to end up with a six inch square. I'm going to even it off, make sure it's a proper six inch square with my rotary cutter when I've done that. Paper, this is what my pattern looks like. I've showed you I've got block one with the white and block two has got a contrast of red. And I've taken around a central piece one design each time in this case it's pattern b and i'm going to cut pattern b four times each for block one and block two i'm going to do the same for three and four with with pattern c and likewise i'm going to repeat it down until i've got eight different blocks and i've got four of each pattern as we go down in each color So I've made up the block pattern again and I'm going to put right sides together so I'm going to sew that over there, that over there and uh, this pattern design by the way doesn't have a top and a bottom fortunately and what I'm going to do and I'm, I'm going to piece these through uh, so I can do uh, three at a time. I have it up against my quarter inch presser foot and I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. Like that, I'm going to snip between the ends and I'm going to finger press them open. And then I'm going to do the same, attaching the other three pieces, one of which I might have dropped on the floor. <laughs> and now with right sides together, I'm going to sew the top row to the middle row and then the middle row to the bottom row. And I've pinned this. It's important that the seams meet up at the same place in both corners. This is the top and the middle row I'm sewing together. And you'll also see that I've nested the seams. That means that the seam direction is uh, falling in the opposite direction. So that they'll nest together nicely and when I iron it will fold flat.
So now I've marked them in rows and I'm going to go along row one and I'm going to sew the five pieces across together and I'm going to pin them so that the seams meet and nest as best I can. And then I'm going to repeat that four times. I'm going to do that on all six of the rows across. And then I'm going to sew row one to row two, two to row three, three to row four, four to row five, five to row six. This is a 30, pat 30 block pattern. And as you've seen, I've got two blocks left over. I might do some matching cushions with those. So quite a lot of sewing to do now. And the rows are completed, they need to be pressed. Now, in order to help the work stay flat, it's helpful if you press one side seam to the right and the next row to the left. That will help them nest well and line up better. So I've now finished sewing it all together. It sews beautifully and it irons beautifully flat. It now measures 30 inches across and 36 inches down. Um, there are some areas where I have a little bit too much of one pattern altogether. But overall, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. Now, I do have somebody in mind for this quilt. And I would call her an English rose. And I'm going to personalise this for her. She's actually studying. I love that one, don't you? She's actually studying floristry in the Cheshire College of Horticulture at Wees Heath uh, near Crewe. And uh, I think this quilt will be ideal for her. The next thing to, I need to do is add borders 